I'm Jeff Philbin and this is Dinner Diaz. And today's idea for dinner here on your TV is, well, a TV dinner, but done right. Salisbury steak with marinated mushrooms and cheesy mashed cauliflower. Perfect for the hungry man or woman in your life. Here to take on the task of feeding this hungry man is Benjamin Pomales, executive chef of Bandit in St. Pete. I'm so excited to have you here, Mary, my friend. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for having us. Now, we're making a classic frozen dinner, but not frozen, no microwave in sight. How do we get started with this? So for today's meal, we're gonna definitely get started with the cauliflower. Okay. Um, I know this is coming later, but we're gonna get this going because it's something that's gonna take a minute. So Perfect. We'll get that going in this boiling water. Um, we'll add a little bit of salt to that as well. Wonderful. That way it's got a little bit of something on there. Perfect. Um, and this is, and that is going to be a reimagined take on what would have been the mashed potatoes that you would be expecting in that TV dinner. Exactly. Uh, I grew up on this TV dinner, so I'm very familiar with it. Okay. Uh, Hungry Man specifically comes with green beans, brownie, and mashed potatoes. And it had those little sprinkles, right, on top of the brownie? Yeah, it had a little bit of sprinkle, and it had like six slivers of mushrooms in it as well. <laughs> Yeah, they count it. Someone yeah. was out there like, all right, that was six. Quality control on to the next one. Costs, I love that. Costs were there. For <laughs> exactly, sure. exactly. So next, let's talk about the Salisbury steak a little bit. Perfect. So Salisbury steak, there's obviously a couple different ways you could do this. Traditionally, it's kind of like a meatloaf. You're going to slow cook that in a little bit of liquid, um, preferably in gravy. Mm -hmm. um, but for us, we like to take that a step further, and we introduce the sous vide with this one. Now, for those at home that might not know what a sous vide is, what is sous vide? Give us the whole sous vide 101. Absolutely. So sous vide is technically um, a French technique. It means under a vacuum. So basically just removing all oxygen from something when you go to cook it in a small amount of water. Um, sous vide is not technically the piece of equipment that you're mm -hmm. using. It's called an immersion circulator. Mm -hmm. So we actually brought one today. Um, it's an immersion circulator. So what this does is you can see the fancy numbers on here. It kind of keeps the water at a specific temperature mm -hmm. um, and it's not going to fluctuate any way from that. So you can see that we have our Salisbury steaks pre-done already inside of the Kravac bag. And cooked at a consistent 132.8 degrees. Yep. You can be that specific exactly. with an immersion cooker. Mm -hmm. So that way then you can just let it ride, yep. let it ride. And the beauty of this is for your like average home cook, especially when you're cooking something like a steak, mm -hmm. um, when it gets to this temperature, it's not gonna go ever go over it. So no. it's something that you can kind of have a little bit of wiggle room. So if you're like worried about always overcooking your beef, this is something that kind of take that away from that. Where can someone find an immersion cooker? Uh, surprisingly, very easily. You can find them on Amazon. Um, Anova's got a brand that they do one for about 60 bucks, but there's several different ones. You can probably go to Walmart, Target, Sur La Tabla, uh, Willens Sonoma. They're very easy to find. And they're not that expensive. No, actually it's funny as, um, Originally, when I first started cooking, the only brand out there was PolyScience, and they had this like giant brick of a machine, and it was like 800 bucks, and nobody ever had them except all the fancy kitchens. So it's kind of crazy now. Um, our parents have them, um, and it's great that we can just find these now at home. I love it. So it, the parents are even using it yep. too. So they're they're hip to the game. Exactly. Taking the tools, taking all of the toys now, and mm -hmm. just bring it to their own kitchen. Absolutely. Very cool. So what do we do next then? So now, once we have the meat going, so we do this for about an hour. Okay. All that's really gonna do is kind of lock in the juices, lock in everything, so you're seeing it here. That way we're not just have this like raw meat just sitting around. Sure. Um, now that we have the finished product, we're gonna go ahead and start searing that. So we got a hot pan going. Perfect. A little bit of oil in there. Any preference of an oil that you like to use for this? Uh, for this one, I like to use just like a canola oil, something with a high smoke point. Okay. Um, it's not really gonna matter. So yeah, because you've meat. already gotten the cook. You're exactly. just trying to get the color in that sear. Yeah, so you're not going to actually, what's crazy with this is you're not going to overcook it either. Um, I know it doesn't look like much now, but once we really get there, you're going to start to hear that going. So we're going to get these seared. We're going to let that kind of ride for a little while. Fantastic. For Benjamin's take on the Salisbury steak, get his recipe with all the ingredients and the directions on our website, dinnerdias.com. Save your dainty digits for all that typing by pointing the camera on your phone at our QR code and a link will pop up to get you right over to us. Now, did this, is this a big dish that you did have a lot growing up with and did it inspire you? Yeah, so I grew up in a very traditional household. Um, my family background is Puerto Rican. Um, so my mom did most of the cooking at home. Um, but whenever she was away from town, 
Um, it was dad's time to step up, and his dad really loves Kid Cuisine and Hungry Man's and so do the kids. So, like, are we, like, missing brothers? Because that was the same thing with my dad, too. It was, like, literally, like, okay, it's, uh, I'm cooking tonight, and uh, here you go, guys. It's like, all right, dinner's done in a minute 50. Go and play your video games, and we're ready to hang out for the night. And make sure your homework is done. Exactly. Okay, yeah. that's exactly how it goes. Absolutely. Um, so while we got these searing, we'll go ahead and get them turned over so you can start to see that caramelization happening. Very nice. What's inside the blender, though? So the blender, so this is going to be for our sauce as soon as these come out. So what we've done is we've taken some plantains. We fried those, which you could bake, you could air fry, you could fry them in an, a traditional deep fryer, blend it, and then blend it with a little bit of water. And that's now become like our gravy. Yeah, exactly. So these are getting good color. So we're going to go ahead and pull these off now okay. while, while we have them so we can get our sauce going. So these are just gonna come out here and just chill. Nice. So now we got these ready. We'll just let these Yeah, we'll just let those here. rest okay. while we make our sauce. So we don't wanna get rid of any of this because ultimately everything's going together. So totally. we don't wanna lose this flavor. So we'll take some onions and we'll start kind of sweating these down. So we'll just let these kind of cook down. Nice. Touch of salt. Being from a Puerto Rican background and my partner, she's Mexican. Um, a lot of those influences change the food that we do. And for this one, we're actually gonna deglaze this with a little bit of rum. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add the black pepper to this now. And it, don't be afraid of the black pepper. And I think but while we're waiting on this, I think it's time for a salute. So I think we got some things ready for us over here. It's, it's rude not to, okay? <laughs> it's just absolutely, you know. If you're gonna cook, you gotta have a little bit of fun. So let's, that's a, that's I think it's time we do a little bit of something. We'll do little small ones here. Yeah, because these are like full-on shooters here at this stage of the game. I think game. these are uh, cake catering cups <laughs> right here. So, Jeff, salute. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for being here today. It's awesome. Super smooth. Love it. <laughs> so, starts the party right. Exactly. So now, it, it's 1 o'clock, right? So now that we're getting some good color on this, we're going to add a little bit of rum. Um, and with this method, I'm not sure if you're gonna ask, but this does cook out the alcohol. So I was just gonna say, I was gonna because, say yeah. you know, we were having our influences of this dish when we were kids. They weren't having the alcohol <laughs> in it for the kids, but because of the heat, it will cook off the alcohol. So exactly. kids, you can have this TV dinner. This is, this yeah. is even better than that. Exactly. The inspiration is there. So we're letting this reduce down just a little bit. We're gonna kind of see it a little bit syrupy. Okay. Um, tradition with an applaud, they use heavy cream. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna use half and half. Now, why the half and half? What, what do you like to have for that, and what's the reasoning? So, I like the half and half because heavy cream just has such a high fat content. So what happens is, generally with this, you don't really have to reduce or thicken it mm -hmm. because of the cream. But because of the, in, uh, the incorporation of the plantains, which is a very starchy vegetable, we're going to get a really thick, thick. sauce if we don't go with this method. Got it. So, so this will help thin it a yeah, little bit Yeah, through trial and error, because I have done this now multiple times with the uh, heavy cream and I've had to bring that back. So I'll go ahead and add a little bit of this as well. Okay. So let's see if we can get this out of there. I'm gonna use this. Gotcha. So we'll add some of this plantain. A uh, little or as much as you really want, as much as you like plantain, I love it. So we're gonna get as much of this as we can in here. And what stops the process of it being not too sweet? So what's crazy is plant, uh, platos themselves aren't overly sweet, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, it just, Gets a, it just gets its wrap of being the sweet plantain. Sure. But it's really not that sweet. And once you try this sauce all together to the savoriness of everything, it's really gonna mellow out. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna actually get like some really nice nutty notes um, through this cooking process. So mm -hmm. now that we added that, we'll let that kind of come back up to a boil. That, and that looks like what you would have. Exactly, it already looks like it's a gravy. It really does, it looks Without, absolutely beautiful. We'll add again another little bit of salt. We, we season it as we go. We don't want to go too crazy at the start. We mm -hmm. want every layer of it to be a little bit of seasoning. Probably I got, I got, I got to go for it. I got to go for it here. I got to check. And I really love your tasting spoon that you got there. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of spoons myself, so I, I see what you got there. I have fun with this <laughs> one, and it's because it allows me to taste awesome, awesome dishes like this. So how are we doing with salt, Jeff? Are we looking good? I think it's, it, it's it, you know, it's getting the funny there. part is like, I'm getting the little subtleties of the plantains in the back of it. Yeah. I got a little bit of that, the rum, and maybe it's just because we still just, I'm, I'm still got it <laughs> on my palate here. But no, I think it's actually really, really cool. And now we're gonna be adding in. Yep, a little bit of that half and half. Where I can see exactly why you wanna be able to thin that part out of it, because it does have a thickness behind it, and it will thicken still, just that little bit. But this is gonna be a nice little way to 
fan it out. And yeah, still exactly. Get... She's, she is. We're really starting to come together here. Um, and we're going to kind of let this come up. Nice. So we're going to let this come to a boil. And then as soon as we kind of have it where we want it, we're going to bring the steaks back into this. And then we're just going to kind of let them sit. And uh, at this point, because of everything we've done, you're really not going to overcook these. And you're not really looking for like a mid-rare, rare on these. It says steak, but this is the poor man's steak, and it's ground beef all the way, so you cannot go too far on this. You can't go too far with that one, and neither can you, because when we come back, simple meal time map, how that cauliflower plus cheese equals deliciousness ahead on Dinner Diaz. Welcome back to Dinner Diaz, and today we're elevating a classic, humble TV dinner as Benjamin Pomales from Bandit St. Pete brings us his take on Salisbury steak. Before the break, we talked all things sous vide and how he vacuum sealed his steak to slow cook it before we seared it and then wasted some perfectly good rum that we could have had <laughs> even more to drink with, deglazing the pan to make that beautiful sauce. Exactly. We also started on our mash, but not with taters. We're going to be making an awaka Alagot cauliflower, will you please help everybody here translate that for those who only understand the last bit? Absolutely. So, potatoes alagot is actually just like a very classic French potato dish. All it means is very cheesy potatoes. Yep. So, um, during the pandemic era, we did some private chef stuff. And uh, one of the private chef's things we did was for a baseball player for the Rays at the time. I won't divulge his name, but he was on a very strict keto diet. Okay. So that really kind of changed the way I thought about a lot of things. He didn't want potatoes. He didn't want like uh, like gluten, things like that. So I was like, all right, fine. Let's just really change the way we think. Sure. That's when we started really introducing cauliflower into a lot of our things to replace potatoes, which you're already kind of seeing now. Perfect. So, so what's in the pan then? So in the pan, so while during the break, we went ahead and finished that cauliflower that was getting boiled, blended it with a little bit of that same liquid and butter. So now all we're doing is kind of bringing it back up to heat and then we're gonna add in some cheese. So this is actually fresh Oaxaca cheese. Mm -hmm. This is out of Pinellas Park. It's from a company called Solina. Okay. Um, the guy's name is Mark. He just moved back from Australia, trained under an Italian chef there, learning hand-pulled mozzarella. He got enough requests for a Mexican style cheese that he really wasn't sure about. Okay. And now we've ended up with this. Killer. So what's crazy is, you know, this stuff is very like traditionally hand pulled. So oh, you yeah, can you see, can it's, see like, it's, just... it's like a ribbon and you it's get just like this yeah. flex, um, but it's so good. Here, Jeff, try this. Um, so now that we got the heat kind of low, we're just gonna throw some of this in there. Um, and we're just gonna kind of let this sit while we finish everything else off. Wow. What do you think? Yeah, it's great. He does a stretch to tell it as well and a couple different burratas, but I mean, it, the product speaks for itself. It's got a beautiful creaminess behind it there. Beautiful balance between just a little bit of the salinity behind it that you would like. And yeah, I can already tell how like it's yeah, going to just melt just start so nicely. See. Look how it's so already coming in that cheesy that it, we're, we're starting good. to get some cool. So this is gonna kind of sit for a little while while we finish everything else up, but yeah, you see that. It's coming together beautifully because to get this dinner on your TV tray tonight in time for TMZ, get Benjamin's full recipe for everything he's been making at our website, dinnerdiaz.com, or just scan the QR code to head right over where you can also watch any of our shows again. Yeah, look how that's all just coming together so like beautifully, great. nicely there. Now, we've got the air fryer. Yeah. What are we gonna be doing with the air fryer? So the air fryer, um, we wanted to bust this out because it's actually something we use at home a lot. Um, it's a traditional, basically, it's a traditional co convection oven. Mm -hmm. It's just a really tiny oven all packed into one thing. So you get this really hard, crazy sear and this dry heat that you could achieve with an oven, but you have to preheat it, you wait for it to get to 475, and then suddenly you're like, man, dinner's taking a while. Exactly, so how are we infusing the air fryer into this particular menu? So we're gonna go ahead and uh, roast off our mushrooms in that. So we've got a nice mix of wild mushrooms, oyster, um, and maitakis. We've marinated that in this paste that we've made. Okay. Um, so this paste is actually gonna be ancho chili, dried cherries, and some black garlic. Whoa. Yeah, we've done it a couple times with some steak and with mushrooms being as mean as they are, this is a great like vegan thing. Okay. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and do that. So now we've got the marinade it. Mm -hmm. We're gonna salt them a little bit and then we're gonna get these into the air fryer. So how long will they take inside the air fryer? So the air fryer, it's so strong and you kind of want to lower that temp, but it should take minutes. Not if not even that. You can already hear it. We got this preheated. 
We're already searing, so. It's already searing. We're gonna go ahead and get that closed back in there. Perfect, and I think we're gonna take a quick little break because when we come back, how all the deliciousness comes together to make a meal ready for the hungry man, woman, or just the person in your life, ahead on Dinner Diaz. Welcome back to Dinner Diaz, and today's dinner idea is a classic, but a reimagined one by our guest chef, Benjamin Pomales, who is with Bandit St. Pete. He's making Salisbury steak, which we cooked sous vide, then made a sauce with blended plantains and half and half, plus our modern mash of awakaka aligat cauliflower. And finally, before the break, we air fried some marinated mushrooms. Now last, but certainly not least, how are we gonna get all this uh, onto that plate right there? Absolutely. So when it comes to plating, especially at the restaurant too, it's all about less is more. So a lot of times at home, you, you wanna plate all the things that you wanna eat, but the reality is, is when you do too much of something, it starts to really clutter everything. So we start with a little and bit of- And this is the man who knows a little something about plating because this is the exterior of the building of Bandit St. Pete. And these are a few of the dishes here that you guys are serving. Look at that, what do we got there? So this is actually a photo from one of our test, uh, tasting dinner series that we've done. Um, and it's just a way for us to really express ourselves creatively. So you're gonna see things like none of that which would be at breakfast. Generally we serve an egg and cheese, but here you're seeing like a uh, Kobia schnitzel and a couple different tartare dishes. And you know, we really like to have fun with that stuff. Very cool. And this one here? So then, then this one is uh, from another one of our series. So you can see that we're doing like a plan of Caesar, a croquetta over there in the top, um, and then a steak dish that I believe we brought in some Wagyu and then did our version of a, a modernist French fry on that one. Absolutely beautifully made, beautifully presented, and look at how you're having this fun with a classic here. Here comes our mushrooms from the, the air fryer. I don't know if everybody can see them. <laughs> they smell fantastic. They smell great. There we go, you can see them. So right out of the air fryer, you get really good color on these things. Mm -hmm. And it really only took a few seconds, like, or a few minutes as we were doing that. And I can appreciate how this is going to be not woven into our gravy here, but it's going to be able to allow for those flavors that marinate to live on its own. Absolutely, friend. yeah, exactly, because it's, it's flavors that complement um, but it's not necessarily we want to mix together. Exactly, because you know, so. it looks and, absolutely stunning. And then we'll do a little bit of just chopped parsley for garnish. Um, parsley itself doesn't really add a ton, ton of flavor, mm -hmm. but it's something that we could definitely bring in. It's cheap, it's something you can get at home, um, and it just adds a little pop to it. So that we'll color just, is just going to make that a little, little bit of more yeah, vibrancy off of it. And I'm very much like, a, I love to have a mess, so then I'll just kind of break this up and then break it all over the plate. So it just really fills in all that negative space. Look at that, that is an absolute work of art, my friends. That is absolutely beautiful. Because to get Benjamin's recipe for a meal which would make James H. Salisbury himself rush to his computer to download if he hadn't have died back in 1905, head over to dinnerdiaz.com or scan the QR code to get there ASAP. And don't forget to let us know if you've made anything from the show. Follow us and message us at facebook.com slash dinnerdiaz. That's what Karen did. She made Chef Tyson Grant's lobster pasta and says, my husband loved it and I loved it. Thank you, Karen. Can't wait. When we come back, we taste test to make sure this is a TV dinner worthy of time on TV ahead on Dinner Diaz. To the show with ideas for dinner, or as we call them, dinner dias. And today, Benjamin Pomales from Bannett St. Pete has been giving a mealtime makeover to the simple Salisbury steak. And Benjamin is a chef with an extensive experience. Not only have you always loved food, but it seems like you've always had a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Even from birth. So, you know, father knows best in a lot of this. This was a dish that your dad brought to the table. Yeah. My dad used to bring to the table for us. My dad also used to have a cold beer in front of it too with us. Yeah, so absolutely. you know what? Cheers. Cheers first for this. Okay. Oh, so good. All right, let's see how let's you've evolved this from what was the humble meal of a hungry 
man to this hungry man here. I'm gonna let you go first in case it's not good. So what should I be tasting here? <laughs> so you're gonna be trying the Salisbury steak first. You're gonna get the nuttiness of the plantain with that sweetness, the rum, um, all those reminiscent Salisbury steak flavors, the Worcestershire, the ketchup, the onions. Mm -hmm. The softness from the sous vide. The sous vide with the ground beef really softens everything up. It so totally does. It's, it's crazy. But it still has that beautiful sear and that touch to it there, so that way then it stays consistent. Exactly. And it has a nice little bite. All right, now, the Oaxaca here. Yeah, so you're gonna basically, it's basically a lot of cheese. And I love cheese. And it's just really good cheese, and you're getting all that veg, uh, vegetal notes from the cauliflower. Uh-huh. All right, and then last but not least, because Dad would make this as the dish, but Mom would used to always say, you gotta eat your vegetables, so. <laughs> exactly. All right, last bit. So walk us through the vegetables. Mm. Real quick, I gotta eat it and enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> you really have to, it's absolutely fantastic. So. Just a mixture of mushrooms, maitake, all roast, uh, air fried with a really nice marinade. So it's just sweetness, very fall flavors. The black garlic brings in those fermented notes, um, and it's just a good complement to everything else going on on this dish. That's an absolute. And winner. mushrooms are my favorite, so. Mine too. Cheers. They're one of my favorite too. Yeah. So mm. to reimagine Salisbury steak for yourself, get Benjamin's recipe at our website, dinnerdias.com. Just scan the QR code to head there now. We also have a link to Bandit St. Pete. Thanks again to Benjamin Pomales and to his mom for the photo. Yeah. I'm Jeff Philbin. See you next time with more Dinner Diaz. Thanks for watching Dinner Diaz. And remember, anytime you're hungry for a great dinner idea, just go to dinnerdiaz.com.